Welcome back. The wizard unfortunately took unusually long to leave. Which puts me in a bit of a conundrum, because I'm not entirely sure if he'll be away for 25 minutes, or if he'll come back at 60 minutes, like he normally would. Well, we'll see. I guess. Um, we need to get all our stuff back. You can actually just get all of it by typing get items. I think get all also works. Dropping to your knees, you reach under the bed and retrieve all of your possessions. Okay, now it's back to Looter to get the remainder of the spell ingredients. The magic map's faded ink has brightened, but only in those places where you have been. Indeed. Um, well, let's check out the rest of the desert. And so it shall be. Well, this is where we defeated Medusa. Let's check out the rest of the desert. Um, you can actually go further west, but doing so is not a particularly good idea. There's nothing but featureless desert. And I believe if you go far enough, you will die, of course. Hey, a snake. Any experienced traveler knows better than to mess with snakes. I consider that a challenge. Oh, well, he left. Too bad. We do need dried snake skin, uh, don't we? The parched sands of the desert seem to reach forever westward. And it looks like there is a dried snake skin here. You notice a dried snake skin lying on the hot ground. You retrieve the dried snakeskin from the hot desert sand. It is delicate and could easily crumble. Better be careful with it then. We have all of our dangerous stuff again. The dry, thin snakeskin is extremely fragile. And another thing we need for uh, understanding the language of creatures. There's that snake again. And I think pretty soon we'll loop around. Like now. Now I'm going to uh, bypass the screens where the... Uh, where I know that the uh, <laughs> bandits can show up by teleporting. Save us some walking around. Let's check eastwards. What do you know? A town! I think this is the first King's Quest game where there's an actual town in a land. Almost makes sense. You have entered a quaint seaside town. Smoke curls lazily from the houses and shops overlooking the ocean. A pier stretches out into the bay. Near the pier, you notice a store and a tavern. Ouch! Oh, I think I walked into the anchor. The old, rusted anchor is much too heavy to move. Let's not try, then. There's a store. The store is on the south side of the pier. Let's see if they have anything on offer. The store is full of general merchandise and supplies to meet the needs of the village. A friendly storekeeper bustles busily behind the counter. Good day to you, young man greets the storekeeper. What can I do for you? Let's see, let's look at the shelves, if they have anything we need. The shelves are filled with all sorts of useful items. There are a few items of particular interest to you. Leather pouches, salt, fish oil, and lard. All things that we need. Um, can I buy some uh, pouches? This is a business, not a charity. You have to buy the things you want. And we don't have any money. That's going to be a problem. I guess we're going to have to get some money then. Hey, there's a nice dog here. 
A dog lying on the floor is obviously a mutt. The name Kenny is embossed on his leather collar. Hi, Kenny. And we say hi to him. We can't hear his response because we don't have the translating spell. I've got some dusting to do, the shopkeeper says, turning around. Just let me know when you need something. As you pet him, Kenny licks your hand and thumps his tail in appreciation. A small wad of dog fur collects in your hand, and you tuck it into your pocket for later use. Yes, because we need um, a tuft of fur from any animal for the understanding the language of creature spell. Well, there's a several spell ingredients that we need here, but we will need money as well, which we don't have. And there's a tavern. The tavern is on the north side of the pier. Uh-oh. Bottles of rum and wine sit atop shelves behind the bar. Two surly-looking characters are drinking ale at the table. Looking closer, you see that they are the bandits from the forest. One of the surly-looking characters yells to the barmaid, Wench, come over here with more ale. And she brings the mail. One of the ugly rogues scowls at you as he says, Beat it, kid! Keep your shirt on, you ordinary buzzards, the barmaid yells. I'll be there quick enough. Without taking her eyes off the two men, she says, I'll be happy to take your order, but be quick about it, because those two are keeping me hopping. Okay, um, buy beer. The barmaid retorts, go on, you duck beat. Drink costs money, you know. Yep, and we are still without currency. Now, we actually want to know what they are saying. But obviously, they are not inclined to talk amongst themselves when they know that we are there. So how can we spy on them undetected? Well, using the Become Invisible spell, I guess. But we don't have that one yet. Alternatively, though, we could disguise ourselves as a fly. Oh, uh... Yeah, they're not always there, which is a problem. Um, is it possible to open the door without going inside? Yes. Okay, dip, um, let's save here, just in case. Good, got them in once. They're not always inside, even if you go inside as a fly. Which is a problem, because then you have to go back out, which closes the door, which means you can't go back in, and if you transform you back into yourself to open the door again, this costs you one of the times you can turn into a fly, or eagle. And since you uh, need to do this again, the, um... That would be problematic. You overhear snatches of the c two bandits' conversation. Squirm just like a pig, and that rope you rigged inside the old, uh, the big oak tree works great. Now nobody will ever find our hideout. out. Why, I'll bet even that wizard. Now that's interesting. Apparently they have a hideout in a big oak tree. Let's turn into uh, ourselves again. The impulse to buzz around has vanished. You feel yourself growing bigger, so you head for what you hope is a safe place to land. They were talking about their hideout being um, in a big oak tree. And that is in fact the uh, oak tree they mentioned earlier, which is two screens west from here, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not really worth teleporting because it's quite close. There is something in this hall apparently, but we cannot see what it is. Again, if only we were small enough 
to uh, get in there, we would be able to see. And sure enough, turning into a fly is again the answer to that particular conundrum. In your insect form, you fit easily through the hole in the tree. You have flown through the hole at the base of the tree and are now inside the hollow trunk. You see a rope leading up into a small hole above you. This area is cramped and confining, even for a fly. And change back. The impulse to buzz around has vanished. Now that we have done this, we've used the spell twice, once to overhear uh, the bandits and once to get into the hole, now it is necessary for us to use the teleportation at random spell later in the game. If you haven't, hadn't done either of these two things, and it is possible to complete the game without doing them, uh, because you can just actually use the rope without flying in there or having hurt the bandits, um, if you happen to guess that it's there, then you will, would be able to use um, turning into a fly later at a point um, where it is also useful, but since we have done that, and there is one more time that we actually need to use the spell, that would be the last time we can use it. Meaning that at the other point where we will uh, end up being able to use the uh, fly spell, we need a different way to get past something, for which the um, teleportation spell comes in handy. But since I planned on doing all the spells anyway, that's not really a problem. And if all of this sounds really vague, don't worry, once we'll get there, I'll point it out. Okay, let's pull the rope. Um, you lie down on the ground and reach into the small hole. You feel around and inside a hollow tree and discover a rope stretching up into the tree. You pull it, and, to your amazement, a rope ladder falls from the branches above. Indeed, it does. Um, and I'm going to save here, because... Well, the ladder is not dangerous, unlike in King's Quest 2, but the hideout is, unfortunately. You can fall down here, and there can be bandits inside, and since I'm not entirely sure if you have to go back down to uh, make sure they're not there, I'm just saving under a different name here. And we'll continue in the next video.